Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafting with Slavi, where we make cards and other paper crafts. In today's card video, we're going to be making this adorable card, which I made as a combination of Mother's Day and birthday card for my mother-in-law. So let's get started. I started out by cutting long strips of the brass <laughs> pardon me, Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. Um, one was four inches, the other was three inches. I measured to make sure that it fit the Magic Picture Changer from Lawn Fawn. And then I used the bathtub from Rub a Dub Dub and I stamped that out in Lawn Fawn's Jet Black Ink. Um, my two panels that I have, I worked on getting like the raindrops, I guess, here. I wanted to make sure they were at the perfect angle, which is why I took out the spout. And I also, in the earlier footage there, um, added bubbles to the other ones. So, um, yeah. So then I went on to stamp my images that I'm gonna die cut out off screen. I also used the Perfectly Plaid Remix Petite Pack here to do the bottom of the card. Now, I've talked about this before. I really wanted to create a simple, beautiful card, and I think I finally achieved that with this card, so we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Um, so here I have two panels. The one on the right there is cut out from the large, large stitched rectangle stackables, and um, the one that you see here, that is the Magic Picture Changer add-on to cover the actual mechanism of the Magic Picture Changer. I uh, am also using, I used the Distress Oxide in Tattered Rose to apply the ink. I didn't go all the way down because I didn't need to. And here I am using my Wendy Vici Make Art Station um, that I'm newly obsessed with. I just love it. It's so handy for doing things like this to secure the panel in place and I'm using Lawn Fawn's Brick Stencil to apply the Ranger Texture Paste in Opaque Matte. Um, now, I haven't used the texture paste before uh, and I was kind of hoping that it would dry white, but it kind of took on the color of my Distress Oxide ink. Now, there could be two reasons for this. It's either not actually white which might be the case, or it's because the ink was still wet. <laughs> I'm terrible for letting things dry, especially when I've got a card project in mind and I just wanna get it done. So that might've actually been the case. Now, about the Make Art Station, it's double-sided. This is the side with the grid mat, which I actually really enjoyed because I wanted the, um, the brick stencil to kind of line up. It didn't need to be perfect, but I wanted to make sure that I could kind of pretend that it was just raised off the background a little bit. And I definitely was able to achieve that because of the grid mat here. So everything was perfectly centered and um, I was able to work with that, which was great. Now, I really enjoyed working with this texture paste. If you have not worked with texture paste before, I highly recommend trying it, especially, especially for a fun stencil like this one. Um, I love the look of a brick wall. I just think it's beautiful. So I was really happy with the results that I got there. Now onto the little pull pieces from my Magic Picture Changer. I uh, blended those out with um, oxide inks as well. The pink was worn lipstick and the blue was tumbled glass. I then went ahead and I stamped out my sentiment. This is just on regular 80 pound um, paper. And I used my clear embossing ink and the embossing powder is from Ranger and it's called Pink Peony. And it's just, it's, a very nice embossing powder, which I was really happy with. And then I used the Everyday Sentiment Banners to cut that out. I used two different sizes just because I like to match the size of the sentiment. And um, here you can see the sizes that I used. It was the, the smallest and the middle one. And um, I did adjust the other side so that I would have that flag design, I guess you could call it, on both sides. Then I went ahead and I used tumbled glass oxide ink to blend those out. And you can see that the writing kind of got a little bit dull. So here I am just taking a paper towel and I'm rubbing away the excess ink before it fully dries. 
Now onto the coloring. This is pretty simple coloring because I don't have a lot of images. So uh, we're gonna keep it simple. We've got Y08 and Y19 here. And I have to admit, I actually pulled additional yellows out because I totally, for some reason, thought that I would make uh, these cute little ducks yellow. <laughs> and then I realized, oh wait, just rubber ducks are yellow. So we're just gonna do that. Um, but I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. So then I went in and I just highlighted them as being white and um, identified some of the shadows and uh, That was fine. I did it for all three of them, but I only left the footage in for the little big guy here For the other colors. I really wanted to kind of bring in all of those colors of that plaid paper that I'm using so I went in with a blue for the boat here ship whatever you want to call it and um, I repeated the same colors that I used there as well on the bubble bath bottle. Now, the coloring here is a little bit weird because I was trying to achieve kind of like a see-through look with a highlight, like a dark highlight, and then I hated how it looked. So I just went back in with my B21 and B23 and I blended it out as usual with the rest of my images. I used RV13 and R43 to do the pink blend, which is another one of my weird Copic color combinations that I get from Sandy Allnock's hex chart. And um, I don't think I have that as a short yet, but once I do, I'm going to link it here so you can go and see how it blends out on a larger canvas. And then my N2 and N3s here for the shower rod. Um, spout thing I guess and um, I used it on the boat as well just to finish it off there um, you could go lighter with this if I had to do it over again I would probably actually go in with cool grays to get more of that metallic look and uh, maybe use a C1 and C3 to achieve that look and then onto the bathtub so I colored the bathtubs the same way I considered giving them like brass feet but then I thought that that would be a little bit too much um, and I didn't want to take away from the other elements on the card so when that was done I went ahead and I colored the bubbles so if you have not checked out Lawn Fawn's channel with the bubbles of joy release and the way that Kelly and everybody has shown you how to color different bubbles please check it out there's lots of options the way that I did it is I just did little um, highlights in the RV00 and BB000, which are the lightest colors of those color families that I have. And I then went in with a colorless blender and just kind of circled around it to blend that color out and gives it a softer look. And I actually really like that for, for um, bubbles. Okay, now on to the coloring of the background. So don't be me erase first <laughs> I didn't erase and it ended up working out okay because I was able to kind of get most of it out after and it didn't show up through the card but if you're like me and it bothers you please erase first you can see that I had to pull out a piece of paper there and um, clean off my marker as I was coloring because it was picking up the pencil marks for the blue water there um, that was B00 and B000 that I use and um, I kind of went around it afterwards to just kind of blend it in so that it looks like there's a little bit of steam rising. I don't know if I really achieved it but I like the finished look so all good. Now when I finished cutting out my images I did go in with that marker and I uh, colored further and you can kind of see that I got most of the pencil out but because um, the paper got saturated with the alcohol ink. I wasn't able to get all of it out. Okay, now on to the construction of the magic picture changer. So there are two pieces. There is the piece that you slide in, which is on the top left there. And the one that I'm working on right now is the first image that you see. So if you're ever trying to figure out where do you put the image that is going to be on the closed aspect of the card, it's on this bigger one where you um, adhere your tape. I'm using score tape here. This is the eighth of an inch size, which is absolutely perfect for this part of the process. So there are score lines to fold this, um, those little pieces that you fold in and they kind of create that track for your mechanism to slide back and forth on so it doesn't come out. 
to assemble it, you need to put tape on both sides. And I'm using my scoring tool here, uh, or my, my bone folder tool here to um, make sure I get a really nice crease, but also to burnish the tape onto the paper so that it doesn't easily slide off. And I will also be using it to make sure that the tape sticks really well once I take the backing off. So to begin, you wanna take the backing off of the inside and just tape those sides down and hold them really well. Make sure it's nice and adhered. And that's gonna create your track. So it's basically an extra layer so that when you slip that other piece of paper there, it's got nothing to get stuck on and it's more or less the same size on the inside. And then once that's done, I did use a block here. Um, in this case, the block doesn't have to be clean, but make sure that you clean your blocks because when you're using them to hold something like this down, you don't want them to get dirty. Okay, now, I don't know if this actually works or if I just think that it works, <laughs> but I do this whenever I have this kind of interactive mechanism and also for um, shaker cards. I apply anti-static powder to help everything slide together a little bit nicer. And then you kind of slip in those slots um, into the other part. So you can kind of see that those, those four pieces aren't attached. So you just slip them in. And then the interaction between them is what makes the mechanism work. And it looks a little bit funny, which is why we have that cover for it. So then I lined everything up, made sure that everything was working, added extra anti-static powder tool, and then I'm gonna remove the backing off of the remaining, the remaining tape and hold it down, align it up, give it a nice burnish, make sure everything sticks properly. And then don't push that down too hard because otherwise you won't be able to get it back up. So then the next thing that I do is I apply my little stopper. So this stopper has a two for function in that it is a stopper so that your mechanism doesn't fall apart, but it also indicates to the recipient what to do. And you can see that those colors look really nice with the plaid. All right, so with that being done, we are going to, um, I think we're gonna adhere this right away. So yes, pay attention to where I'm putting the glue. You can put glue on the top and the bottom and then just around the edges there. And that's to make sure that you're not gluing down parts of the mechanism. Um, the mechanism does need space to work. So you wanna make sure that you are being conscious of where you need to put the glue in this case. So then I went ahead and I adhered my background onto a two and a half, sorry, an A2 card base. <laughs> and, this, and then I went ahead and I used the block again to weigh it all down. Um, with the Magic Picture Changer, it is always a good idea to pop it up because otherwise the recipient might have a really hard time grabbing that uh, pull tab. And then I went ahead and I measured and trimmed out my plaid pieces to make sure they were exactly where I wanted them. And then I went ahead and I adhered them. Now the idea that I had was that the plaid piece is kind of the floor of the bathroom. So everything's gonna line up rather nicely. I wasn't too fussed about making sure that the plaid matched. So I was able to use the same piece of paper for the whole card. Um, and I just cut out pieces. I didn't cut out a whole piece in an A2 size, for example. And then I went ahead and I laid everything out, which was pretty easy because it is a very simple card. And I started adhering. So um, I did remove the glue from the shower nozzle because it's overhanging the uh, magic picture changer and I didn't want it getting stuck. And I kind of hid the bottom with that little rubber duck. And then I used a variety of just glue and pop dots and it's the scrapbook adhesive um, foam squares. That's what it is, foam squares in a half inch, quarter inch size and in the regular and thin size. 
so that I had a nice variety. And because there's so much dimensions, to give you an idea, the Magic Picture Changer, um, the dimension on it is that it's about the size of a regular foam square. And so for some of these, I actually had to pop them up with a double layer, like for this duck right here. Um, there's a double layer of foam dots there for his feet um, because I wanted him to be kind of lifted from the card. So you just have to be aware of that when you are putting this together for yourself. And then we are just about done. So I wanna thank you for joining me today. Um, if you enjoyed today's card, please hit the like button. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions and um, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And this is the finished card. Isn't it so cute? And I like that it um, functions as both a Mother's Day card as well as a birthday card, which is the case for my mother-in-law. So thanks again. This is Slabby from Crafting with Slabby, and I'll see you in the next one.